and welcome to the first video for the Rankin Mantis Patreon. I'm Tony and well here we have the first model that we are going to paint. It's a Jellerpox Mural for, um, from the Box of Kill Team and well I tried this miniature because uh, it got a lot of possibilities uh, in colors, in the shames, in effects and it got a lot of different parts that I can explain a little bit how I paint them and how we are going to work on it. Also it's Nurgle, it's from Chaos and they are my favorite miniatures so I'm very happy to start with this one that we are going to ruffle at the end of this month so we go for it and hope you like the videos. Okay we have the model prepared, uh, the base is made with a black prim uh, from Citadel, the Sprite one, and uh, now I'm going to use as a first color the cork brown from Vallejo. I like this color because it's uh, a medium flesh tone. It's not so golden like for dwarves or another best. It's not so pink like for humans. So I think for this kind of monsters or this kind of skins, it's better to work with a medium tone. It's not so brown and it's not so clear. So I like it uh, a lot and I use it for, um, for most of my my skin tones. And the dilution, the perfect dilution where you are going to do a base is not go too much with the water, okay? Just mm, the same uh, water that the brush uh, get when you clean it. Um, I put it directly on the, on the pint and trying to make something solid. If you go with a very thin paint, uh, you are going to have a lot of problems to get a solid base over a black uh, prime like in this case. If the prime was gray or was white, it was mm, really easy to get that color in only one layer. In this uh, case, I'm going to go for two. Okay, so well, it's very important to uh, put all the paint around the miniature without put too much on some areas because you can destroy some dead aisles or you can create some texture that you are not going to need but well in this case in Nurglev it doesn't care but maybe you are painting a, an elf or a woman face and maybe if you create some textures in some parts because you are putting too much uh, paint or you are not thinning it uh, correctly it can give you a lot of problems to fix it later the brush I'm using for, for the bases is a number two from Winsor and Newton. And then I suppose I'm going to paint with a uh, number one. That it's better for details and for small areas. I'm going to let the arms uh, like the claw and the fly for paint it in another colors okay this is uh, the two layers already are dried already are prepared are solid as you can see all the miniature have one color is not uh, they are not darker or clear areas so it's already perfect to start with a wash or start painting only with lights and shadows in this case I'm going to use a wash because it's uh, a really easy um, <coughs> trick, I don't know now the word, <laughs> but it's something, it's a product that is very helpful to, to paint, okay? And more if you want to paint a lot of miniatures, like for an army or for a war game, and then the washes are a really helpful tool. So, for this miniature, I'm going to start with the Rayclan Flesh Height uh, wash from Citadel. Okay, because it's a uh, brown, not too brown, it's uh, got a little bit of red, so for the flesh, as his name says, it's a very good uh, tool and wash. So the first one, uh, try to expand all the, the paint, okay, to not put too much on some uh, holes or in some corners of the miniatures, because then uh, the paint can get a little bit um, gloss and we are looking for a, a non-gloss uh, result. If you put so much wash sometimes in some area, you can clean your brush, uh, dry it well and go fast with the dry brush 
on the area you put uh, too much uh, wash and it can take a little bit so it will it can be helpful if you are making some mistake or something like this also uh, not waiting uh, for the wash to get uh, dry i'm applying directly a bieltan green wash okay because it gives another tone of color color for me it's very important it's give a lot of light to the miniature so i like to play with different washes and when we are playing with demons or with monsters like this uh, put different colors on the flesh it can give more life it can give more charisma and then you have more possibilities to run another colors and give his his skin uh, more personality and more detail now after all the wash uh, gets dry okay just take a look around the miniature that everything is correct if you start using the first layer on the miniature and the wash is still wet and um, it's going to mix and it's going to destroy all the shadows and everything but well and now for the first layer i'm going again with the uh, cork brown the first that we use on the base for make the first light for the first light i'm not going to put in all the over areas i'm just going to imagine like the light is coming from the sky so all the top parts of the miniature i are going to receive a thin layer to start uh, marking where do you want the light come from it this is for me one of the best uh, ways to to do it because it's very helpful and you don't have to put light everywhere and on every detail all the parts that are under the light mm, they are going to be dark and it takes a lot of work that is necessary for the kind of painting that we are looking for oh for example on his stomach all the upper part of the stomach i'm going to paint it then on the pectoralis on the front side i'm going to paint the other side and almost to the half of this part okay to start creating the the light effect and then on the next layers we are keep we are going to give it more form and you will see how easy it is to get a, a nice uh, lighting on the miniature just focusing on the upper areas also in the arms the first one you can go a little bit crazy and just paint everything that you think is going on on lights because you can fix it on on the seconds or on the third and on the fourth uh, layers that we are going to play and you don't need necessarily to respect now all the lines of the musculars and everything because we are going to draw this with the next light The scene of the paint have to be like when we were painting the first layer. More carefully in the face. It is important because just the you no know, the, the nose um, area, all the head and the back, everything of this is going to be painted with this first layer. The lines between the muscles we can respect them we can get it because it's not so dark this flesh height and and it will help to to make the miniature more visual at the end of all this process As you can see the lighter place on this miniature have to be his back or his <laughs> that kind of back he have 
ok all of this it's directly exposed to light so we are going to find it everything and keep on mind where the lights come from so we can give him the, volu the volume that we are looking for as you can see when we are going down the uh, light area it gets smaller and in some points it's just a little line and nothing else if you find some detail or some pleage of the muscles or of the skin that you think it can have light and it's helpful to paint it to show to show his his shape then paint it In case you are looking to make some kind of effect or texture, mm, the brush stroke has to be like a small mix between dots, like in this case, or lines. I, I like to work with both techniques, um, even I'm not looking for a super texture or whatever, but it will help a lot to make then the the transition between colors to if you only paint with with lines the transition will be be very um, i don't know how to explain it uh, it will be very easy to see then uh, on the other side if you paint with uh, mixing points and lines when you want to make the transition and you keep doing on this way it's more easy to to make this transition more natural and it's more pleasant for the eyes to watch this kind of effect the first these first uh, layers are very important to take your time to make sure that you are putting putting all the lights where they have to go okay because after this if we got the mix already done and you have to go back again one step to pine on another time with the first layer and everything it takes time so it's better to take your time to go slowly and at the end this is more helpful to them uh, to paint faster on the future less you have to fix more faster you will find so we are going for the sunny skin tone or golden flesh in spanish um, this color yeah, i will uh, you will see that i'm using it on a lot of different places because it's a clear color so you can mix it with any kind of color and it's not so pallid like the white the, if you use a uh, white color you are going to get a lighter colors of course but they are not going to have that intense of uh, color and with the golden flesh we are keeping a clear color but also we are not losing his brightness his intensity this is why i love to use this color and also for skins because it gives a lot of life on the skin now the second lights as you can see we are going a little bit more for the detail like the shapes of the muscles in the pectoral like the little abdominal that he have on his stomach okay this kind of a small lines now we are start drawing a little bit how his body is okay that it will be more helpful for the future layers a little lines on the sides and all around the one he has in his front I'm going to paint it with clear colors okay so it will be more visual and it will be helpful after this if we try to make some kind of infection effect or wounded uh, skin effect 
as you can see now in some points I'm going very very careful just painting some lines making the edge and keep drawing all the skin if you put uh, like a cat or something in middle of the miniature then you have two sides that make that a scar uh, in this case we are painting with uh, overlay that is coming from the top then the side that we are going to put the, the layers and the light it has to be on the downside because it will uh, make this effect of volumetry that we are looking for also with the lines of the muscles in the arm like the veins he have on his biceps all of these details now we are going a little bit more carefully and painting keeping the same shape that the miniature have here all of this for me is the back side with this the upper side but <laughs> this I suppose in some times of this uh, human being it was his back so as the first time this is the part of the miniature that is receiving more light so here we are going to put a little bit more attention to paint everything a little bit more clear always respecting the edges and the sides of every muscle okay because we don't want to kill this volume effect it don't have to be 100% real it's a miniature and one, what we want is to make it uh, very visual something like you can watch it and think oh my god oh, it's a spectacular or whatever but no, it's just a um, few tricks to make it more natural to, to the eyes here we keep going with some uh, 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 mm, dots dots and lines okay trying to give him mm, a little bit of textures like this uh, kind of weird form he has on his skin after all he's a mutant of nervous so he deserves all of this he like it As you can see here on the back, we are I'm also painting the the under muscles, and in a logic and real way, uh, this part doesn't have light because it doesn't receiving the light from the top. But uh, if you don't want to paint it, you can leave them, okay. But if you paint it, um, yeah, we are breaking some natural light layers. We are going to do this all the time because we are painting a miniature, not a not making a real model and also as I said many times before it helps a lot when you are watching these miniatures from some distance or in the table or in the battlefield it they when you put them on group it looks really really amazing and people like see this this kind of, of painting Okay, as you can see, I'm not painting all the all the surface of the muscle. Uh, I'm just painting some different points. Every time the inner area it's smaller, so we can create this uh, volumetry on the miniature. Okay, always the light I'm putting just on the opposite side of the shadow, uh, just on the line. here we paint a little bit more the arm so we can give more light on that muscles and also here and here now um, uh, this moment you can do this all the times you need okay when you get the 
uh, when you are doing it more times uh, the light is going to be more solid so the transition can be uh, more root also so maybe it's better to give just one or two layers using the same mix or on the second one adding a little bit more of the color that you are using to make it clear in this case the sun skin mm, the golden one also careful to draw with a single line all the veins and always peering the light on the opposite side of the shadow here there are some barrels and some postals but well more or less the general idea as you can see it is getting it only have uh, four layers for the moment the base the wash and two of lights now i'm going to play with this wizard purple from fantasy fantasy game i think is then on the on the letters you will see exactly his name and i'm going to use this purple pe uh, paint for the shadows i don't want to go to browns because it doesn't give it so much color and with this kind of purple that it have a lot of red i'm going to mix it a little bit with the cork brown to not get a very strongly shadow area and if we mix it a little bit we have this change to make a progression to the shadow that it will look better than if you go crazy to put a very dark color in a in a shadow area in this case we are going now for the opposite sides that we are giving the light so we are going under the breast of the miniature I'm going to put a little bit more to the mix and a little bit of water to thin it okay then you can dry a bit your brush and you have more control with the paint and the quantity you are peeling on the miniature it's not a glaze because you are using a lot of uh, pigment of the paint uh, something light okay and now we are going for all the under areas for whatever whatever you find there is a a mark of volume from the, the from the sculpture and trying to give him his this this new this new color on the skin as you can see he is already getting a lot of life the the flesh start looking like uh, something real because at the end if you look your flesh you got a lot of warm colors on it you are not going to watch that oh, under my arm it's totally brown no no there are uh, warm colors like purples like uh, reds like also greens works a lot uh, we will lose this kind of colors for this skin or in future projects here on the side also most of it I'm going to put it on this new shadow mix that we have made because the tension has to go to the front part of the miniature is where, where, where your eyes are going to look so it's where you have to put all your effort all the other areas you can fix them and complete them just painting a little bit of shadow on it and putting a bit of attention on some details here on the around the head and under his super back okay marking it's important to also draw lines to separate the muscles in some areas okay as you can see easy in a moment just marking four or five very important things of the miniature we have the front side do uh, done 
now in the back is the same also it uh, helps uh, well if you sometimes put some too much uh, paint um, take it with a finger or fix it with the finger it's another really easy way and fast way to make a transition well of course uh, don't try to do it in a small areas because you are going to make a mess and keeping going all the shadow here on the back I can go a little bit more crazy because <coughs> we really really don't care about this part of the miniature here under the belly is important to give him a good shape uh, a good um, shadow and light areas because it's a very important thing of the miniature and you are going to want this part look very very good now and for the moment we have the first layer of shadow i like to if i paint two layers of light i like to paint two layers of si of shadow this helps to make a balance between the lights and if not sometimes maybe your miniature can look uh, or too dark or too bright in. and then is when it's something wrong or it can look cool but it's something like you say oh man something it's not mm, something it's it's wet here so now we are going for a pure purple i think is wizard purple from vallejo okay and we are going to keep drawing the lines on the shadows now we are going to respect the first shadow layer we have made with the purple from fantasy game and now as you can see i'm more just drawing some lines to separate the parts of the miniature to say this is the arm this is the belly this is the head and it doesn't look um, so strange now the purple because we have a mid-tone make it with the other purple and the cork brown that helps to make this transition and this change of, of color a little bit more natural and also the purple for nasty things there is always something that works pretty good pretty cool okay as you can see here we can we have a lot of contrast just using these colors here on the neck also respecting and be very careful with all the the veins and all this detail he have on his on his body as you can see here under the belly is one part that we are not going to work uh, a lot so just put it a little bit of the shadow on dots on lines in this case as you can see i'm going more for dots because it's more helpful for the skins when they are so big like this also you will find that in some parts where you are where you didn't use too much the first shadow layer it will look more weird or a bit more you, you you cannot you can find that the transition is not so clean like in the front and wh what i do is before the paint start drying i put a lot of water on my brush i dry it a little bit on the paper and then i start to to diffuse uh, the paint that i put at the beginning it has it also if you are fast it helps a lot to fix some mistake that you made and on the upper side we are not going to put any kind of purple because we don't want uh, darkest areas on this part of the miniature we are going for the first layer the first shadow that we use 
that it's more to create uh, this effect of uh, real skin with these pinks, reds and purple tones that are giving this miniature. As you can see I'm painting here almost uh, with, with just water and a little bit of paint to give this tone to the miniature. Now you can see, you can see all the muscles all the f shapes of his uh, skin, all the mm, f these monster parts he have, but you can uh, still watching it and say, okay, here is the torso, here is the head, here is the back, here are the arms. And now we are going for the mod green. And palette flesh. Palette flesh is a very useful color. You can use it in a lot, in a lot, a lot, a lot of parts. For the same reason as the sun skin tone, because it's a very clear color, but it doesn't take the the life of the paint. It keeping it keeps uh, the bright and the um, and the intensive uh, and the intense of the of the painting you are mixing with. So for the moment I'm going to paint it just a little bit with the palette flesh to go to this you are going to be the last lights. So it's important to don't go crazy, mix it. I'm going to mix it with the last mix of cork and sun skin. As you can see here in the palette, I'm mixing the three colors until I find some lighter but not too much uh, strong to not break that transition and makes more easy to, to use it. So we go again for all the top parts. Just a little bit here on the lines of his shoulder. And again, just respecting all the first layers of light we have done, and now use painting on the upper sides. Sometimes just a little dot, a little line, it, it, it helps a lot to create this volume. Here with the vein, very carefully to not make a mess. Okay, and here you can see that it's just a little line and here we go a little bit under every shadow and you will have this brightness here in this case I'm not going to make all the line just I'm going to make it on the mid zone to give this sensation of uh, volumetry. Here you can see a few lines and they will draw already done all the body. Also on the wounded part, all the edges, I'm going to paint them using some dots to mm, to make the transition with all around this area and I'm going to go very strongly lines on where I find that there are some cricket parts like here on the sides we keep going with this color I think I, I'm not sure if I'm going to put more light but with this light it it already works perfectly and then because we are going to use more colors uh, we get another tricks to to create more light on the parts that we are interested to make it here on the side now it's important to mark all the details
here on his super back as you can see I'm going all the time more inner the muscles and here is almost a great part done mixing a little bit of dots and a little bit of lines for the same as I told you before okay we keep the mix and now very carefully I'm going to paint the top part of the mouth and a little dot on his nose and also on the sides of of this lens he have here this is not the original head of the miniature I changed it because the original it wasn't in my opinion it wasn't the best part most of the mutants his heads I, I didn't like them so I changed them it comes these bits on the same box and they work pretty good here I keep going with dots So the change of color no it will it will not it wouldn't be so aggressive. Hmm. And well here you can see the skin. Uh, we have to do the legs, but I will do it on the future. But for the moment, um, all the skin it's already done. You got uh, very you don't have use it a uh, very dark colors for the shadow so all the miniatures keeps looking pretty good and it got different tones so it got more life and it's more more visual as I say and the skin keeps this warm color that we are looking for and for the moment that's it and see you on the next video bye bye